Hi, everybody, and welcome to Book Break. My name is Claire. I'm a librarian here at the Greece Public Library. I moderate As the Page Turns and also our historical fiction group. And I am joined today by my fellow librarian, Hannah. Hello. <laughs> so Hannah is buying our teen collection, and she's also going to be starting a new teen book club, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm excited um, to start it and buying the teen books because I read teens, so I feel like it's really fitting. Yep. And for those of you that don't know, I used to buy teen. Now I'm buying nonfiction. So I think Hannah is going to give this collection a nice, fresh, rejuvenated look. <laughs> Thank so you. I'm very excited to see what you do with it. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, me too. So, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about what books we've been reading lately. I've kind of been on a thriller bend. I don't know why. <laughs> That's where my new year has started. Um, and I don't know about you, but I think you've got a little bit of teen or YA yeah, for us. Yeah, so I have two YA fiction and one adult fiction for okay. us. Okay. are all kind of like contemporary romance type books. All right. Awesome. Well, I will start. I'm going to start with one that I actually read for Pints and Prose, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the book groups here at the library. It's called The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. And it was a very compulsive, like, psychological thriller that featured multiple storylines. It had three different points of view, an unreliable narrator. Oh, those are always the best, though. <laughs> yeah. A sociopath, I would say, several mm -hmm. different mysteries, several murders, a crazy cult, um, <laughs> a love obsession. It had it all, basically. Oh, it did. It was <laughs> it was a lot going on yeah. in this book. But um, the first point of view that you're going to hear is Libby. She's about to turn 25. She was adopted at a young age, and she always knew she was going to be getting some kind of inheritance from her birth parents. So she's been awaiting this because she had no idea if it was going to be something small. And come to find out, it is this huge mansion in Chelsea in a section of London. It's kind of dilapidated now, but mm -hmm. you could tell that this was once a grand house. So meanwhile... You have another storyline start, and it's a young woman. She's probably about 40. She's down on her luck. She has two children. She's pretty much living on the street and playing. She's very musical. She plays mm -hmm. like a fiddle to kind so of So she's like a money. street performer? Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And living in France, I believe, in like a beach town in France. Mm -hmm. um, so she gets a text message saying the baby is 25, Oh, And that kind of alerts her to get her plan going and get her family to London. Mm -hmm. Point of view number three is a boy named Henry, who was a part of the original family that lived in the house. So you start to hear how he had a very loving set of parents, but his mother was kind of free-spirited. And she starts letting people come into the house, like musicians. And then later there's another character who's obviously very dark and I would say mm. like a cult figure. Yeah. So you're starting to see the family decline and he's trying to deal with the trauma of what's going on to his family and the house. So these three narrations combine when Libby goes to find the house and mm. she also recruits help from a reporter because she wants to know what happened to her birth family because she finds out that her parents were murdered and she was just or not murdered they they were discovered dead in the house and then she was discovered as a baby crying with like three dead bodies wow yeah so it's almost like a news story too with the yes. reporter involved yes mm -hmm. so it's a uh, a lot of twists and turns if you would like, like, I don't know if you read anything by Ruth Ware or some of these. I think I read another Lisa Jewell book. I yeah. can't remember which one, but I remember liking it. Her yes. writing was really good. Yeah. So it, it definitely keeps you engrossed. You kind of have to pay attention. Because yeah, it's very fast paced. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many, you know, you have to keep track of the three different line, um, right. point of views. Point of views. Yeah. And the one, like the young woman, you don't really find out who she is or how she relates to the story. Right. Until, like, the middle of the book. Yeah. And then you start to understand. It starts making more sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'd say it was pretty good. It was pretty entertaining if you like kind of the thriller genre or, like, a psychological mystery. Right. Um, yeah, I like books that sometimes, like, have, like, a twist. It just depends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This had a lot of a lot of twisty things Yeah. It going sounds on. like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... 
What's your first one, Hannah? That All right. You've got so for us? my first one is Be Treed by Emily Henry. I know you read another book by her. Yes. And she, well, first off, her writing is just amazing. Like the way that she like has the characters interact and the way that she writes, it just feels like you're there, mm-hmm. which I remember that we kind of said that about the book you read. Yes. So that's what I really like about her writing. But in this one, you have Gus in January and they're both like... They're both um, writers, but Gus only writes, like, very serious books. And okay. then January writes exclusive, like, romance, happily ever after, thing like that. And um, they knew each other in college, but then January has to go to her father's beach house because he passed away, and he's living right next door. So they decide that they're going to have a bet of, okay, He has to write a happily ever after, and she has to write a serious novel, and then whoever sells the most books wins. So they get into this bet, and they have to do, like, their research on how to write these books. So for Gus, like, January, like, takes him to, like, the drive-in and, like, the beach and, like, the carnival and, like, all these, like, happily ever after-induced kind of places, you know, like, things that are very, like, cheerful and happy, things that you'd write about in a romance, and then... For January's book, like, Gus takes her to, like, a cult leader or, like, no, an ex-cult member. Oh so, my like, you have to write about, like, why they're in this cult and, mm-hmm. like, they talk about, like, the cult leader and, like, how they escaped and all this stuff because, like, in this book it has, like, very serious topics. So right. he's, like, if you're going to write about a topic, you have to interview people and this is, like, what they decide to take the book direction in. So, like, they really compliment each other like their personalities are very different but they also like challenge each other to be better and they just have a lot of great banter and great conversation so that's why I really enjoyed it yeah that sounds really good I might have to read that one too definitely because I know you read book lovers but I like beach read the best book lovers was also very good but the thing I like about Beach Read, it's like a mix between like romance and serious. Like, okay. there's a lot of serious conversations that happen yeah. in Beach Read. I like the yeah. fact that both of the books that, you know, by Emily Henry that we talked about have like some connection to writing or books in it. Yes, they do. That yeah. really appeals to me. So. Yeah, same here. As librarians, that makes sense. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Library and love. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, I think like the characters are great and like the fact that like they grow together and they bring out the best in each other and the way they challenge each other, you know, like it's a really like beautiful thing to like read about. Yeah. So I just like, it's a comfort read for me. Like I really enjoy reading it. Like it's just really easy to read you know well i might have to add that one to my list that one sounds yeah, it's good. a good one <laughs> okay all right all what's right. your next book well my next one did have some romance in it okay. and i would say instead of being like really too creepy i mean it did involve a murder mm-hmm. but i would say it was more like magical realism okay it was called spells for forgetting by adrian young and she actually, this was her first adult book. She has written a series of oh, young, young adult, adult ones. Was yes. it the Fable one? Fable. Yes, yes, I remember exactly. we talked about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, which had beautiful covers. And ironically, mm-hmm. I think this one had a really gorgeous cover too. That's always nice. Yeah. So I got this one from Book of the Month as like an extra. I got a free extra for my birthday. So, um, but this one starts, our main character is Emery Blackwood. And her life is changed forever. Like she and three of her friends, they're high school students on a very beautiful remote island off the coast of Washington State, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Um, So the night of, I believe, their high school graduation, they're supposed to be getting ready for a party. Um, She and her boyfriend are getting serious, and her best friend ends up, they find her dead, and there's a horrible fire in the orchards that are very important to this island, like their whole economy and the whole town. Um, So years later, oh, well, the bad thing is, is her boyfriend, his name is August, is Mm -hmm. accused of murdering um, her friend Lily. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that throws a damper on things. (laughs) Um, So, of course, you know, the townspeople are divided. There's a lot of drama about this. And Mm -hmm. he and his mom end up, he was never formally charged because they couldn't find any evidence. evidence. But he and his mom just leave, you know, so they've left. Meanwhile, Emery, you know, she develops a new relationship, which really isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the one thing that cracks me up about these books is they always like never forget their high school love. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. Yeah, like they always how do many that. people do you know that that happens? To? I would never like no. anyone from my high school. I no. can't. I can't think of anybody that you know yeah. is like fifteen years later still absolutely consumed not. with their you know high school love. No, but, no, but you're absolutely right. Every time in like a book, they're like, oh, like we were fifteen and it was so romantic. I'm like, how? Like yeah. how does that work? <laughs> I know. So anyway, um, August's mom dies, and the one thing she wants to do is she wants her ashes returned to that island because it was always their home, mm -hmm. you know. So he comes back, and of course, you know, he runs into Emery, and things start to go wrong again, like someone sets August's truck on fire. and um, So like sabotage kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah. So you start, she starts really wondering, okay, so what really did happen? Like, right. so she finds like her mom and August's mom were actually very good friends. Like she finds a box of letters up in her house and she starts reading them because she always never could figure out like why he never contacted her. Right. So there was um, another reason that we find out in the book. Yeah. Okay. So Interesting. you have this mystery of like why he left and what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and if, you know, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but right. you do find out that the murder wasn't what you think it was. Right. And, you know, there may be other motives and other people in the town. That's that, kind of what it sounds like from the synopsis. Like right. someone's like, someone else is involved or something else happened. Yeah. 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 There's more to the story than meets the eye. Right. But the island setting was really cool. You could almost kind of feel that it was a magical mm -hmm. place. Um I think Emery is actually from a family of witches. Like she owns cool. a tea shop and, you know, does like tea leaf reading. Well, she she stopped doing them when, when um, mm. her mom died. But, um, you know, they kind of have but that. But they have like that spiritual, like magical element yes, involved. Yes, that little kind of witchy element yeah. going. That's so, cool. um, yeah. So you do find out what happens. Of course, you know. There's some romance in there too, mm -hmm. but um, with the do, high school sweetheart, guy. with the high school sweethearts, you know, because apparently you can't ever love anyone else in your life. But I you know. know, but it was it was good. Yeah. It was entertaining. The one thing I will say is, I kind of felt, even though this was supposed to be her like adult jump over, I, right. I felt it was still very YA kind of in nature yeah, it because sounds of that like it. way that relationship was. What was the age range of the characters? Do you remember? They were probably like in their 30s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's like same with Beach Reader. And They're it was like in their 30s. kind of slow and repetitive in the first hundred pages. Like mm. I got it that she was heartbroken because he left. Yeah. And I got how beautiful the island was. And I kind of felt like she just beat that for a while. But, right. you know, then when the mystery of, like, why everything this really starts to started to happen, then I couldn't put it down. Yeah. But um, I sense. almost gave up on it, you know. Yeah, I don't like when authors do that. Like, I don't know if you read New Moon. If you read New Moon, like oh. when Bella and Edward broke yes. up and Bella cried about it for 200 pages. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of yeah. when you're talking about it. <laughs> like exactly that. I'm like, yeah. okay, like Bella's sad. Can we like move on yeah. with the story? Move on, Bella. We, yeah. We don't need to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Edward's like 3,000 years old. Like, yeah. let's get over it. <laughs> but yes, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was my second one. Okay. So... My second book is The Selection by Kira Cass, which I know we've talked about. Yes. And I always come back to this book because it's just so fun to read. Like, it's definitely like a guilty pleasure. But basically, like in this dystopian world, like everyone has a number and it's like your ranking. And it's kind of like um, a caste system. Yeah, like a caste system also based on like how much money you make as well. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, like one is like the royal family, like the richest. And then like, I think the lowest is like seven or eight and like it's very very like poor you know and then our main character is a five so she's like in the middle but towards like the lower end of the cast so like when you're five like you have to be like a performer or like musician artist like things like that and you're kind of like looked down upon by majority of people but mm -hmm. you're not like at the lowest of the low okay but they have in this dystopian world they have like royal family and the prince is ready to be king i think he's like 17 or 18 years old and they do a selection which is like a competition basically like the bachelor where they have like girls compete to be like the next queen so america's our main character and she put her name in as a joke like she's in a relationship with this guy and he was like 
yeah, whatever. Like you can put your name in. (laughs) So she puts her name in and she gets selected and she's only five in the competition and she doesn't expect anything of it. But then like when she gets there, she's like, Hey, like maybe if I win, like I can make a difference for people that aren't rich or that you know the everyday person so and help out her family and other things too yeah so like she really like wants to make a difference and she really cares about people and she cares about you know how the society works like she wants things to be more fair so like when she sees the opportunity to make a change she's like okay like I actually do want to compete like for real so and America's like such a great character like I just love her personality and she's very like headstrong and like the other girls are mean to her and she's just like whatever and I'm like if that was me I'd be like crying but like for her she's like whatever so like I just really liked her and like just the book like seeing people get eliminated like it has Mm -hmm. that like competition aspect and like also like they have like um different challenges they need to do like they host like a royal family from another country so they have to show they're like diplomatic and they have like Q&A about like foreign policy and like things like that to show like how knowledgeable they are about like things that are going on in the world so like it's more than just like oh like they're pretty it's like they have to be like beautiful they have to be knowledgeable they have to be like diplomatic yeah because they're like your next queen and like people will like have their opinions like the bachelor like oh like we love america or no we don't like america and like the other contestants so you get to see that as well Mm -hmm. as they're competing like they'll say like how the votes are and like how like the populations like favor or like not favor like certain contestants yeah so it's definitely a fun read I definitely recommend it I think it's three or four books in the series I want to say and yeah. then there's like spinoff right after that so I remember thinking that was so entertaining it's kind of yeah. a book you just devour you can yes just sit I read down it so read. fast yeah yeah the other thing I it just amazes me how that has not been picked up for like a TV series it or something. It really should. I would definitely like binge watch that in two seconds. Oh, I think so many people would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, they definitely Get do. Get on this whole loop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they definitely need to make it into a show. I would yeah. love it. And like, it's fun because like people on Goodreads were like casting like who'd play America, who'd play yeah. this person. And I was like, it just needs to be a show. Like you said, like it'd right. be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that would make a great show. Yeah, definitely. So. All right, what's your next book? All right, my last one is called The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. So I'm back to like Creepy House again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this one um, also is like a dual timeline thing. It has a 1970s kind of story and also a modern day story. Mm-hmm. So, and you have two different points of view. So you hear from the main character in the modern story and also the main character in the 1970s story. So I... Some people that were on Goodreads read they didn't like the historical story, mm-hmm. but I really liked it. And you like I, historical fiction, right? Yes, yeah. and I remembered that time period, and I could even like picture associate it. and picture different things that they were talking about. Mm-hmm. So we have, in the modern story, we have two women, Emily and Chess. Um, when they grew up, they were inseparable. But by their 30s, you know, their bond is a little strained. They've moved mm-hmm. in very different directions. Um So when Chess suggests a girl's trip to Italy to kind of spend the summer at this exclusive villa and both work on, like, writing projects, Emily, you know, wants to reconnect with her best friend, and she also really needs a boost in her life because Emily is a hot mess right now. Mm, Um, She's kind of had a mysterious illness. Her marriage ended because of it. Her husband Mm. kind of walked out on her. She thought he might have been cheating. Um, he's also trying to sue her. She's a cozy mystery writer and he's trying to sue her and saying that he helped inspire everything. So he's entitled to half of her proceeds. So she's not in a good place right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, conversely, Chess, who was kind of like the poor girl in the relationship when they were growing up, she is now like an internet superstar. Mm -hmm. She is one of these social media influencers. She also has written like self-help books for women. Like I'm picturing Girl Stop Apologizing. Yes, you know, the <laughs> Rachel Hollis. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So so these two women go tooling off to, to Italy. Well, meanwhile, you jump back and find out that the villa they're staying in was the site of this bizarre murder in like the 1970s. <laughs> and 
it was t a rock musician that invited people to come and stay. He kind of wanted like muses, so mm -hmm. it's like the summer of sex, drugs, and rock yeah, and roll. Yeah, I was it, just thinking that. Yes, at yeah. an Italian villa, um, and so you have a young woman named Mari who she. She came from a good family in England. She left her family. Her father pretty much disowned her when she did this mm. because the musician that she was with was already married. So there was that scandal. Yeah. And then yeah. now she's going to this villa where this like very successful rock musician is hosting them. She has um, a, a stepsister who also is going. Like They both kind of are after like the same person. Mm. Um and both of these young women are creative. Like Mari is a writer and her stepsister wants to be a musician. So, you know, you it was a very interesting story to me because supposedly the stepsister, the, the, the man that Mari is supposedly with mm -hmm. ends up getting murdered, you find oh, out. Oh, okay. And she, however, after this time period writes one of the most successful horror novels of all time and her stepsister writes one of the best music albums of that time. And the way they described it, I'm like, oh, that was Carole King Tapestry. You know, <laughs> it's just, I, uh, that's kind of, so I could kind of feel these vibes and yeah. kind of picture the music they were playing and what they were up to. So, um, but of course, Emily, when she's there, she starts digging into the story. Mm -hmm. And then you start to wonder, well, what's going to happen in the present? Is the murder that happened back then going to affect what's happening now? Is somebody going to get murdered now? You know, so. Yeah, it, a lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was interesting. It's, yeah. you know, it's like if you like thrillers, it's thriller candy. You yeah, know? basically. Yeah. <laughs> it has it all sounds like. Yes. So um, <laughs> it was good. It was yeah, entertaining. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's what I got today. All right. So my last book is The Phil and Boyfriend by Casey West. Okay. And I really like Casey West in general, but this is my favorite book by her. And again, another like guilty pleasure. I was looking on Goodreads and everyone like hated it. They're like, boo, like this book sucks. I was like, excuse me, but I understand where they're coming from because it's not like literature. It's just like a great like guilty pleasure. Read through it fast. Like yeah. it's fun. Like it's not meant to be like, you know, like... I don't know, like The Great Gatsby or something. It's just meant oh, right, to be a fun right. read, you know? Yeah, I don't think anything we've talked about yeah. today is like, <laughs> you know, classic yeah. literature. Yeah, so in Phil and Boyfriend, so the main character is Gia, and she is like very like self-absorbed and vain, and that's what people were like complaining about. But again, she's like 16, 17, like whatever, you know, that's to be expected. So she um, is supposed to bring her boyfriend Bradley to the prom, and he's like a cool like college guy so he's like she's like oh like can't wait for you guys to meet bradley like he's older and he has muscles and like can't wait to like show him off but they don't really have like a connection other than like appearances mm -hmm. or like basically like very superficial level of like oh like he's older and he has muscles and that's like about it but like when she's at the prom like he i can't remember if he like called her or if he showed up but he basically was like yeah like i want to break up now and i'm not going to prom with you so she's like at the prom and she's like oh my god like i don't have a date at all so like she sees like this random guy that's her age in the parking lot and she's like hey like will you go to prom with me and he's like okay so like she brings him to prom and he pretends to be her boyfriend and like it all goes well everything's fine and then they like part ways and she's like wait a minute like I liked that guy and then like she finds out that she was going to school with his sister so she like gets his information his name's Hayden and like this book is obviously meant for teens so like for us like it's very obvious like what the message is like basically like hey like you and Hayden had fun together and like he wasn't muscular and he wasn't a college guy but like you guys like connected on like an actual like emotional level you know what I right. mean Not you just, actually like, were interested in him as a person exactly yeah. and you enjoy spending time with him like mm -hmm. and like Gia's like figuring this out she's like wait a minute and like also like it's a lot of fake dating which is like my favorite because yeah. it's like oh like you have to pretend to be my boyfriend and he's always like oh like I'm a theater kid I'm like Hayden like just like give us the answers <laughs> but like it's just like fun to like see them like grow together mm -hmm. I mean I think Hayden's already great but Gia needs to do like a lot of growing like just because like again like she dated 
Bradley, who stings, just based on, like, the way he looked and, like, right. his muscles. And, like, Hayden, like, he also looks good, but he's nice, and he has a good personality, and he has a nice family, and, like, those are all things that are, like, green flags, you know? Right, so, like, yes. She goes through the book, and she's like, wait a minute, like, this is actually, like someone I could be interested in, but then you don't know if it's real or not because he started off as like a fake date. So right. she's like trying to figure out like if it's like legit or not. Yeah. So that's kind of how the book is. I actually read a lot when I travel, like I'll download on Libby and read it on the plane. Cause mm-hmm. it's just like so fun to read. Cause I'm like, Hayden, we need some answers. Like, yeah. do you like my girl Gia or not? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's really just like an easy book to read, you know, yeah. like it's not anything like crazy, but you just read it so fast and it's so enjoyable. And like, I don't like reading books that are like too serious or depressing because mm-hmm. like the real world is depressing. Well, sometimes you, you know? need just something light and something mm-hmm. fun. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's exactly how I describe this book. So like I, when I'm like reading, it's like, oh, like, how did the prom go? Like, does Hayden like her or not? Like, that's yeah. like more what I'm reading for. Like, just yeah. to have that fun and like light element, you know? Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the teen book club. Like, oh, yeah. are you going to feature like, it's going to be a different than just a it's traditional a little bit book different. club. Yeah. So teen book club, I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, so we're each doing like a different genre for the month. So for February, everyone's going to pick their own mystery book and it's going to be more of like a book talk as opposed to like a book club. But it's just got to be a mystery book. And then we're all going to meet and say if we liked our mystery book and what it was about and if we'd recommend it to people. And then, like, I have other months themes picked out. So, like, one month is, like, book talk. Like, any took any kind of book you've seen on TikTok. Or, mm-hmm. like, one was, like, romance. One was... Um, I think I had October's like spooky, like pick a spooky book, you know? Right. So, so there's no real pressure to everybody read the same book. Exactly. You can kind of come and socialize yeah. and maybe even get some suggestions for what else you want to read, hearing what other people have read. Exactly. That's more what I was thinking. It's like a great way to like recommend books to people and make mm-hmm. friends and like, you know, just have some snacks and have it be really casual. So that sounds fun. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. So hopefully, you know, it'll pick up and people will come and We'll get to like recommend books to each other. So sounds sounds perfect. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Hannah. And also thanks everybody for listening. If any of this sounds good to you, or if you feel like being entertained with either like a thriller or a more light romance, pick one of these books up and then as always let us know what you're thinking. Um, you can email us, follow the podcast, leave us a review. We're always listening for what you want to hear. So Thanks. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the Friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed by Sean Greif.